Hey everyone, this time we're going to be looking at Sega Arcade Classics Volume 2. This is another Hardcore Gaming 101 book, and you know it covers a lot of the games that were sort of one-offs for Sega. The first volume covered a lot of the longer-running series and a lot of the more well-known ones. So the first thing that we look at are the vector graphics games that Sega put out in the early 80s. Vector graphics were really cool, especially because you couldn't see this anywhere but the arcades and a little bit later on the Vectrex. But these were really unique to the arcades at the time and just really looked awesome. Now we get into one of the two series that we're going to be looking at. Most of them are going to be single games, but for Zaxxon and Hang On, we actually have some more longer running series. Zaxxon is not a very long running series for the Sega, for Sega, but it was one that was pretty cool looking as you can see. This was ported over to the Master System, that's the way I've sort of experienced it, and it looks really awesome. So you can see just how different it looks on like some of the computer and a few of the early on systems, like the Intellivision and also Atari's 8-bit computer and the 5200 here. Next we look at Borderline, aka Thunderground, aka Star Raider. This is kind of a cool game because it's a, it plays a little bit like Jackal or Silkworm, where you're playing as a tank and you kind of have the ability to move around a little bit. It's a really nice looking game, especially for 1981. Now we get into one of the longer series here, and this is Hang On. This is a really cool game. It's a pretty standard racing game, but one thing that's really cool about it is the arcade cabinet, especially for Hang On. You basically sat on a motorcycle and you had the display and sort of the dashboard. It was a really awesome looking arcade cabinet. This became one of the staples for Sega. They put this out on a lot of their early systems, and it definitely was worth playing, especially if you're into racing games. Or if you're like me and you don't really care that much about racing games, this is a pretty cool one to play. So now we go into a few of Sega's beat-em-ups. And I really wanted to call out Riot City here because this one looks really fun. It is a, It does look a little bit like Streets of Rage, and I think that might be why Sega didn't bring it to the home console. But I could see this and a few of the other games we're going to talk about in like an arcade one-up cabinet for Sega. It would be really cool if they did that. Another one that I think would go well into, like, if Sega did an arcade one-up cabinet, I think their Spider-Man game would definitely fit in great. I had no idea this was a Sega game, to be perfectly honest, but I did get a chance to play this in the arcade. One of the weird things is the choice of characters you have for this beat-em-up. I get Spider-Man and Black Cat, but for some weird reason they threw in Hawkeye and uh, Namor. I have no idea why they did that, but I guess they just couldn't they couldn't figure out what other characters to throw into a Spider-Man game. I, I don't know. And now we come to kind of a weird selection of games. These were Sega's first person shooter games in the arcades. And normally when I think about those, I don't think about any of the games that are listed here. I think more like House of the Dead or Virtual Cop. But it's kind of cool to see these games in here. Maybe we'll see the other ones in uh, like a volume 3 if that ever gets made. So that's going to wrap it up guys. I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick, quick uh, flip through on this book. Uh, please let me know what you think in the comments below. Whether you liked the video or hated it. I always appreciate the feedback. Anyway, talk to you all later and hope you have a great day.